Hi, hello, and welcome to day six of the Uplift Healthy Lifestyle seven day self love challenge. Today, on day six, we are focusing on expressing ourselves. Being able to express ourselves freely is another form of self love. Uh, getting to that point where you can feel that freedom might take a little work, but the practice is the love. Uh, so today we have a yoga flow that will focus, uh, much like in yesterday's flow where we were tapping into the energy in the heart and the throat, we are doing the same to help release some of that energy from the throat, give it some freedom so that we can express ourselves freely. We're going to have a little fun with the flow, we're going to have some fun with some different breathing exercises, uh, so we're just going to have some fun today. In the workbook, some more fun is waiting for you. Another opportunity for you to express yourself there. The link to the workbook is down below in uh, the YouTube links in the notes. So go ahead and check that out. And for the practice today, having at least one block handy may be helpful. Uh, if not two, uh, you can also use home props as well if you don't have blocks, a box or block, uh, book or anything of that nature. So we will begin seated here. So any comfortable position, you can sit on the block, you can roll up a blanket or some kind of a pillow to sit on if you choose. We're just finding a comfortable seated position. Let the spine come a little straighter and then soften through the shoulders, maybe sway the spine and then come to center softly. Closing down the eyes or taking the gaze to the floor Focusing on your breath here. Just feeling that life force come in and feeling that breath cleanse itself out. As you breathe, filling up from the belly first, then take the energy into the ribs, those side ribs expand, and then your energy into the base of the throat. We'll take one more inhale here. Nice full exhale. Bring the chin to the chest here. Gentle compression down into that throat area, but opening through the back of the neck. Shoulders soften down. Roll the left ear to that left shoulder. That right, ear, uh, right shoulder softens. You can even take the left hand to the side of the head. Just rest it there. We're not necessarily pulling just resting there, a little additional weight can open up this neck a little bit more. Release the hand, chin to chest, sweep it all the way through to the other side, right ear, right shoulder, pausing here, left shoulder soft, and then maybe the right hand comes to the side of the head, just resting it there. Release the hand, chin to chest. Chin to chest, staying here, and then the hands come behind the head as if you were preparing for like a sit-up motion, but we're clasping the fingers behind the head. Let the elbows start to fold around the ears. We're not pulling, there's no active pull. Again, we're just resting. Breathing here. And slowly release the arms. Notice the freedom that uh, happens from releasing the hands and then the head comes up. Let's take the shoulders, squeeze them up into the ears, roll them back and then down. Let's keep moving. Shoulders forward, up, back and down. Forward, up, back 
and down. Let's change directions now. Back and up, forward, down. Back, up, forward, down. One more time. Nice job. Now inhale, sweep both arms up here. Feel grounding through the sit bones. The energy rises up the torso, the arms to the fingertips. Deep inhale. As you exhale, drop that right arm, reach with the left. Both sit bones stay grounded, bending through that el right elbow as much as you need. Reaching through those left fingertips. Next inhale, both arms up. Exhale, drop the left arm, reach with the right. Same side, same deal on this side. Sit bones grounded, left elbow bending, reaching through those right fingertips. Inhale, both arms up. Now twisting to the right, the left hand to the right knee, right hand comes behind. So we gently start to look over that right shoulder. Next inhale, both arms up. And twisting to the left, right hand to that left knee. Looking over the left shoulder gently. and return to center. We're gonna stay here for a seated cat-cow. So hands to the knees. On the inhale, the chest pulls forward, the gaze lifts up. So we're starting to arch to that back a little bit. And then as you exhale, round the back, the shoulders roll forward, the belly uh, draws backwards towards your spine, pulling that chin towards the chest. Inhaling through the nose. Now on your exhale, open your mouth. <sighs> Audible exhale. Then inhale. Open up. Exhale audibly. <sighs> One more time. <sighs> Come back to center here. Let's come to hands and knees for tabletop pose. Hip stack over the knees, shoulders over the wrist. The fingers are spread wide. We're gonna come into a cat swan flow. Let's start with our cat cow from this position and then I'll lead you through the cat swan flow. So first, cat belly pose. The belly dips down, the gaze lifts. Feel that freedom through the throat into the heart center. And then exhale, round the back. Press into the hands, navel draws upwards. Now take your sit bones to your heels, child's pose, and walk the hands back to kneel. So this cat swan flow from low kneel, sweep the arms up to a high kneel. The hands plant down, cat pose, rounded back, cow belly pose, the chest opens, and then child's pose, the sit bones descend down. Let's try that with a breath. Inhale, come up to our kneeling. Exhale here, resetting. Inhale, high kneel, arms up. Exhale, plant the hands. Continue exhaling as you round that back. Inhale, cow belly pose. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, coming up to kneel. We'll go through that one more time. All the way up. Inhaling. Exhale. Hands plant around the back. Inhale. Cow belly pose. Exhale. Child's pose. Stay here for an inhale. Pause for the exhale. And then come up to your tabletop once again. We'll thread the needle here, opening up through the back of our shoulders. Plant through that right hand. The left arm sweeps out to the side. Sweep it under the right. Shoulder comes down, face down. Right arm slides forward, and those hips start to shift to the left. Trying to keep the hips stacked over the knees here. Distributes the weight to help 
gravity take that shoulder down and open. You might get a pop or two here in the spine. Just breathe through it as long as it's not painful. And slide that right hand back, press up, left arm reaches out to the side, and then plant it down. Drive through that left hand, the right arm reaches out. Slide it under the left shoulder down, face down, left arm slides, and the hip shift to the right. Deep inhale, feel the opening through the back of that shoulder into that heart space. And then slide the left hand back. Press into that left hand as the right arm reaches and then both hands plant. Let's warm up our core a little bit. Generate a little bit of heat. That fire helping to bring the, the sense of freedom and feeling good about ourselves all the way up through the heart center into the throat. So with our tabletop pose here, extend that left leg out behind you so the core is engaged, that belly button draws up, the spine is long, right arm reaches out, in front of you now extending through fingertips to toes deep inhale here exhale pull in elbow and knee towards each other pressing into that left hand pressing into that right knee inhale open wide exhale squeeze together inhale open exhale squeeze two more inhale open and squeeze last one and squeeze open it up here nice little bonus bring that heel towards your glute right hand comes to that foot or ankle press the foot into the hand open the shoulder here and release it down sway the hips from side to side so reset and then engage the core belly draws up spine is long Whew. Extending the right leg here. Keep the belly engaged. Left arm extends. Reaching, reaching. Deep inhale. Exhale, draw it in. There's one. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. There's three. Here's four. We've got one more. Extend it out here. Heel to glute, left hand to that foot or ankle. Press the foot into the hand, helping to open the front of that shoulder. Nice work, release it down. From our tabletop, we're coming all the way to our bellies. So you can get there however you choose. You wanna take the elbows wide as you descend, or you can unfurl here. As we come into crocodile pose, the hands stack like pancakes, forehead to the top. The legs snuggle in next to each other. Now in yin yoga, this next pose is called half frog. So it's simply a quad stretch. So starting on the left side, just bend the knee so the heel comes to the glute. Right hand plants in front of you just for support. The head can come down if you choose. Left hand reaches behind for the left foot. And rather than pressing away as we just did with that sunbird, now we're pulling gently the foot towards the glute. Breathing here. and slowly release. Pause in between, crocodile pose. And then we'll set up for the right side. So the left hand is planted in front of us, option for the head to stay rested down. Right knee bends, heel to glute. Right hand comes behind to find the foot or ankle and gently pulling the heel to the glute a little closer.
One more deep inhale. As you exhale, slowly release the foot down. And pause here. Crocodile pose in the center. Two long breaths. Nice work. Now let's take the hands a little forward of the shoulders and a little wider than the mat. Before we come all the way up, we're going to press into a cobra pose with the elbows wide, the fingertips option to press in and tend the palms or you can keep the hands flat. From here, we're just lifting up, finding a gentle back bend here. If you feel like you can release the shoulders down, lift the gaze, you might try it. Soften down, we'll do that one more time. But first, let's roll the shoulders, then press into the hands, lift the gaze. Nice job, lower down, hands under the shoulders. Make your way through table. Let's find a downward facing dog. Tuck those toes, press into the hands. You can hover the knees, find a couple of bounces before you lift up and that's okay. Sit bones are reaching toward the sky. The hands are pressing down and away and we're lengthening the spine. If you feel like you're hunched up and rounded, try bending the knees a little more. And of course, soften the neck. Try to release the shoulders. Then bend the knees more. Look at the hands step forward to a forward fold. You can baby step, you can take one big step. Maybe even a baby hop. Bend the knees here. Hands to shins. Lengthen the spine. From here, root to rise. Arms sweep up. And hands to the heart. So one of our uh, interesting breathing exercises in this practice today is called circle of joy. So we're coming into Tadasana, mountain pose. The feet are underneath the hips. You can lift the toes, spread them wide, help to feel a little more grounded here if that helps you. Another way to feel a little more grounded is to take a block in between, uh, right in between the thighs above the knee. Sometimes that can help support the low back a little and feel that grounding sensation a little more connected here. So that's an option. So circle of joy is mostly in the arms, but connecting the movement of the arms with the breath. So I'll turn a uh, three quarter way here just so you can kind of see it from a different angle. So we start in Tadasana, shoulders circle up back and down, the arms reach in front of us. On an inhale, the arms sweep up, and as we exhale, they circle wide, forward, still on the exhale, and then into the heart. So it's a shorter inhale. Exhale wide and forward into the heart. So the inhale, press it forward, lift it up. Exhale, take it wide, forward, heart. Inhale. Press it forward, all the way up. Exhale, wide, palms together to the heart. Fewer cues here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Nice work. All right. So hopefully you feel some of that energy. Maybe some joy is the name of that breath implies. Certainly the energy is moving through a little more freely. All right, so now we've got a Tadasana Malasana flow. So coming into Tadasana once again, heels or feet stack under the knees, under the hips, 
pulling that belly in, we're not so much tucking the pelvis, but we're certainly just pulling that belly in slightly and the tailbone's pointing down. Shoulders roll up, back and down. From here, deep inhale, sweep the arms up. Hands through center, bend the knees into your forward fold. Tipping over at that last bit. Shifting the weight a little forward here in your forward fold. Knees can be bent, by the way, if you need to. Helps relieve some low back pressure if you're feeling any. Come up halfway here. Walk the feet out about as wide as the mat. Toes point out and heels are in. Deep inhale. Exhale. Descend down through the knees, through the hips, into our yogi squat. The elbows are inside the knees, the palms press together, and we lengthen up through the spine here. If you need a block, that's a nice option here if you're not feeling, feeling quite as flexible today. Uh, you can also come into a higher yogi squat if needed. From here, hands plant, hips lift up, toes point forward. You can keep the feet wide here. And then exhale, soften down into your fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, toes out. Bend the knees, hips descend, yogi squat. Deep inhale. Exhale, hands down, hips up, toes forward, soften. Stay for an inhale. Stay for the exhale. Next inhale, shins. Halfway lift, toes out, descend. Lengthen. One more inhale. Hands down, hips up, toes forward, soften. Stay for the inhale. Stay, exhale. Halfway lift, toes out. As you exhale, descend down. Stay for the inhale. Full exhale. Last forward fold here, hands down, hips up. Toes forward, soften into your fold. Stay for the inhale. Stay for the exhale. Now bend the knees a little here. Root to rise, press into the feet, let the energy draw you up, and then hands into the heart. Nice work. All right, moving into a different flow here. So starting from chair pose, coming into a pyramid pose. You may want to have a block handy as we set up our pyramid. Uh, not planning to have the hands down, but if you get wobbly and need to have the hands down, the block can help bring the floor up to you. So starting in chair pose, option for the toes to come to touch. The arms reach overhead, hips slide back as you bend the knees. The arms are overhead, the shoulders away from the ears. That belly's pulling in. We're feeling like the scooping energy is happening. That can help release the low back here. One more deep inhale in this chair. Then take the weight into your right foot. That left heel lifts up. Step the left foot all the way back. Keeping the feet hip width apart like you're on railroad tracks. And then drop that heel down. The front leg extends. Now you may need to do some adjustments here. Sometimes in pyramid, we need to have the feet a little closer together. The hips stay square, so right hips pulling back, left hips pressing forward. Legs are relatively straight, not locking out that front knee. A micro bend is fine. Sweep the arms up here. From here, take the hands down, press, place them on either side of your low back getting into the part just before it gets a little fluffier, right? The shoulders start to squeeze together behind you, the shoulder blades. The elbows start to squeeze together behind, feeling some opening here through the heart. Hmm. 
from here, deep inhale, we're gonna fold this forward, hinging at the hips. So it's this kind of an action, so we're not slumping down. Nice tall spine as the hands are behind our back. Hinging forward, halfway here, deep inhale. Exhale, fold. This is where you may start to get a little wobbly. Having a block here may help if you need to place a hand down. Otherwise, the arms stay planted behind, trying to squeeze those elbows towards each other. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. As we're here, right hip continues to draw back. Left hip is pulling forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. As you're folding, try to soften the head. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, folding. Again, lifting. And folding. Last time here, lifting all the way up. And then bend through that front knee. The back heel props up into a crescent pose. The arms are lifted here. So in our crescent pose, if you want to plant that foot down, straighten the leg for just a moment, take a quick break. So we're going to practice lion's breath here. Lion's breath is an inhale through the nose, and then you open the mouth, stick your tongue out, and then it's kind of fun. It's kind of scary at the same time. It's probably not something you're going to do in public uh, unless you are doing it with a bunch of other people who are, who are doing lion's breath. So it can be a little fun. And if you're by yourself, really try to have some fun with it. You can make a funny face. You can really <sighs> let it out. So the flow here from our crescent pose, front knee bend, driving through the back heel. Arms come forward, rounding through that back shoulder, really stretching. Inhale, bring the arms up. As you exhale, we'll cactus the arms. As we cactus the arms, stick your tongue out, lion's breath. <sighs> Inhale, hands together and forward. All the way up and exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> Two more. I think we've done three now. Last one. Nice work. So again, kind of fun. Feels a little strange if you've never done that before. Let's bring the arms all the way up here. Tap. <laughs> A little d distracted by my lion's breath. Little hop and then step forward. Let's pedal out the feet. We'll find a forward fold. Inhale up. Swan dive into your fold here. Bend the knees if you need to. Try to release that back. Maybe even sway from side to side. Nice work here. We're going to go through that same flow. Chair, the pyramid flow, the crescent with the cactus arms and lion's breath all on the other side. Halfway lift here, deep inhale. Ground through the feet, root to rise. All right, let's set up that chair pose. So option for the toes to touch, slide the hips back, arms overhead here. Feeling the strength in the legs, feeling that energy scooping up, up, up. Engage the core, lift the chest, and also release out of the low back. Now take the weight into that left foot. Right heel lifts as we start to step it back into that pyramid pose. So again, feet are like on railroad tracks, so they're not in line with each other. The front leg straightens, but not locking it out. A micro bend here is fine. Now our left hip is pulling back right hip is pressing forward nice job arms up reaching and then bring the hands behind the back on either side of the low back shoulder blades squeeze together elbows start to squeeze together deep inhale here exhale halfway fold remember hinging at the hip deep inhale here 
exhale, soften down, trying to relax through the neck and shoulders as you fold. Inhale, halfway. Those elbows squeezing and opening through the heart. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, folding. Trying to keep that left hip drawing back. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Let's get two more. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, folding. One more time. Next inhale, coming all the way up. Nice work. Now release that back heel. It starts to float up as you reposition the feet into that crescent pose. So we have the same arm flow with lion's breath here. So nice strong stance in the legs. The arms press forward. Feel the rounding in the backs of the shoulders. Okay. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale. Three more. Last one here. Nice work. Now let's come all the way down with the hands to the mat. Step this front foot back. Come to your knees. Sway the hips from side to side. We're going to come down to a child's pose. Option for the knees to be wide here. The arms extending forward and the forehead softening to the mat. Reconnect with your breath here. You might even bring your awareness to your throat and just notice if there's any more freedom, any more sensation of freedom. Notice how the energy might be moving through the throat and even into your heart space. One more inhale here. As you exhale, walk the hands back. We'll move to our backs here. So we've got a few poses on our backs and then a brief Shavasana before we move into a final breathing exercise. So have a block handy if you have block or similar prop. And as you make your way to your back, we're setting up for bridge pose. So the feet are planted about hip width apart, the arms alongside the body with the palms facing down. So let's activate into the back body a little here. We're pressing into the feet. The belly's drawing down. The shoulders press down. The hands press down. And we peel those hips and back up off the mat. Let the knees draw in towards each other, but not collapsing. We're not overly lifting here because we're still getting into this back body a little bit. Roll down one vertebrae at a time. Take a moment and then let's try again. Press into the feet, shoulders, hands, belly button pulls down, the hips lift up. Maybe a little higher this time. As you lift those hips on this one, notice the chest lifting as well. The chest is lifting towards the chin. Feel the back of the neck expand and then slowly lower down. Pause a moment here. We'll do that one more time. Bridge pose, pressing, navel draws down as the hips lift up, maybe a little higher. Maybe the shoulder blades walk a little closer under the back. Hips press up, chest drawing up and towards the chin, maybe the chin a little towards the chest. Notice what happens to the energy in the throat as you do this pose. Breathing. One more inhale. Roll down as you exhale, nice and slow. Nice work. Feet a little wider here. Windshield wiper those knees. Moving as slow as you need to here. 
as that knee comes down, notice the stretch through the outer hip into the front of the quad, and then change. Next pose here has a couple of options for you. So depending on how you're feeling, depending on your energy, depending on your comfort level and moving into these poses, you can always stay in uh, either a waterfall pose, just floating the feet up. The feet are coming higher than the heart. That does a great job in reversing some of the energy. The other option is to take a block under the sacrum area, that low back, once it feels stable, knees up, feet up, supported shoulder stand. So here's an option. And if you want to try the next option, the third option, a little more um, advanced, I guess, depending on you know how your body uh, takes it. Full shoulder stand, so the feet, uh, the knees draw in. You create a little momentum and press into the hands. Bring the hips up. The feet come up overhead. Plow pose is where we start. Plow pose, you'll notice the similar constriction through the throat area. Notice the energy. Breathing here. The hands come up behind the low back on either side of the spine. You can stay here in plow pose, or you can work your way up to that shoulder stand, which is a matter of placing the hands behind the back. Once you feel supported, the feet lift up. And you can continue to walk the hands up the back as you work the feet towards the ceiling. Now in plow and in supported shoulder stand, don't turn the head. It's not good for the neck. So if you need to watch before you do and then pause, certainly take that option. When you're ready to come out of this pose, the feet start to lower down, back into plow pose. Then the hands plant behind you. They're your resistance, so you don't just flop down as the feet come back to the floor. So you press into those arms and use your core as you start to lower and unfurl. And then the feet come down. Nice work. Now regardless of the option you chose, we're going to counter that briefly. So if you had the block under, remove the block. And then we'll find just a quick fish pose by coming up onto our forearms here. The elbows are underneath the shoulders. The feet can extend. If that's really not comfortable, you can pull them up. Either way is fine. The chest starts to lift up here. The head starts to lean back. So we're opening through the heart and the throat. and then bring the head back up and soften to the floor. All right, coming into our Shavasana here. So any comfortable Shavasana, if you want to take a more traditional, the feet are wide, the toes flop open, the hands on either side of the body, palms can face up. You could also find constructive rest, feet wide, knees together. If you're feeling anything in your low back, this can be a nice release. And from here, the hands can come to the belly or they can extend out. We'll stay here for five full breaths.
and then bringing your awareness back to your body here. Slowly rolling to one side, coming up to sit. So we'll close our practice here with B breath. For B breath, you probably want to be seated. You could practice lying down, but being upright uh, makes it maybe just a little bit easier. So you can give it a try. So with B breath, it's another fun breathing exercise that maybe not want to do in public, but if you don't care, that's fine too. Uh, sometimes we just need to uh, practice whatever works for us, wherever it works for us. So with B breath, we take our middle finger, you can do uh, your pointer and your middle finger, and you're just placing them to the uh, cartilage of the ear and just gently pressing down. So we're not sticking our fingers in our ear, we're not harshly pressing down, we're just gently closing the opening of the ear. And so that's the hands. The breath part of it, you're gonna inhale through the nose, and as you exhale, also through the nose, but you're going to activate a humming sound. And as you hum, the sound is going to reverberate in through your skull and you're going to hear it in through your ears. It's going to sound like bees. Uh, and this is uh, helpful for our nervous system. It can be calming and soothing for the nervous system. It also activates the energy of the throat and helps us to express ourselves a little bit more. So closing off the ears, we're actually going to try this breath five times. So five inhale, exhale cycles and each time humming as we exhale. So hands or arm, uh, fingers to the ears, gentle closing, deep inhale through the nose. And as you exhale, Exhale, exhaust the breath there. Deep inhale through the nose. Full exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more to go. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. the hands from the ears. Let's take a cleansing breath here. Nice work today. So that was day six as we practice expressing ourselves. So make sure you take this energy to your journal work. Um, and then of course, come back for tomorrow, final day, day seven, where we practice trusting ourselves. So another uh, fun and interesting practice where we're trying some different things, but also the most important thing, making time for ourselves. So to close today with peace, love, and namaste.